Hey folks, and welcome to the Guns, Gear, and Grub channel. I want to do a quick video now of one of the weak links in the AR-15 series of rifles, and that is gas blocks. Um, as you might know from my previous videos, there are two types of gas blocks. One is the, uh, the pinned-on type, which is the, uh, the, 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 the original type that came with all the original M16 rifles, and, and another one is what you see a lot of times in the civilian, civilian world, uh, are the set screw types and people like these set screw types because they often uh, offer a lower profile advantage for people to go ahead and fit under free float handguard or, or the extended rails so I want to do a quick video showing the inherent um, disadvantage of, of these things and, and possible ways to go ahead and correct these types of the gas box just as an example I have here two different styles of gas blocks that are both screwed on one is this Yankee Hill style, which you see screws on by, uh, it is a four, a three piece design, there's the top piece here, and I was kind of hard to see it's camouflaged, um, this bottom piece and bottom piece here, and this goes ahead, this top piece comes over here, and the bottom pieces clamp on. Now, this is good for people who have a, uh, a uh, permanently attached muzzle device, they can go ahead and, and change out uh, the front end, but inherently it is less stable than a pinned on device. And another style of screwed on gas block is this generic style right here. As you can see, there are three uh, set screws here, and this is simply placed, slid over the barrel. It is then got, you know, screwed into place, uh, and these screws go ahead and, and, and put pressure or tension against the barrel, and this holds the gas block in place. Now, I'm gonna let's go take a closer look and see why these gas blocks are inherently less uh, reliable and, and some of the possible causes for their malfunction. So before I go into in-depth um, possible causes of different malfunctions with these types of gas blocks, I would like to go ahead and give a brief overview of how the direct impingement gas system works on the Air 15 rifle. I know to most of you this might be uh, old news, but just a quick overview for some of you who might not know, this way you can get a, go ahead and get a good idea of how this system works and how the malfunctions are actually caused. Here you have what's called a gas port. As the bullet is fired, gas expands here, propelling the bullet forward. When it gets to this hole here, this gas port, uh, a little bit of gas escapes, goes up through a little hole, it's hard to see, inside the, uh, the gas block there, and it travels through this gas tube, back into through this gas key, and propelling this uh, carrier backwards, it's cycling the action. This is all dependent upon this whole system over here, this gas block and this gas port being lined up. Well, let's say you have a gas block like such with two uh, set screws like this on the side that clamp it down nice and tight. One of the inherent weaknesses here is that let's say you have, a, uh, you have a nice rail here, so you put a nice flip upside in there like this Yankee Hill Machine one. Now you're out in the field or you're in a house and you're and you accidentally whack this into a door jam or you drop the rifle or it falls into the concrete or or, or um, you, you know whatever it is you, you smack it up against a tree or a rock um, with this post extended in the up position this goes ahead and acts as a nice little lever and if you go ahead and you even can't this let's say five or ten degrees as such that gas port will become obstructed with the steel on the inside of this gas block. This rifle will no longer be a semi-auto. It will now go ahead and function only as a bolt-action rifle essentially. You're going to have to pull that charging handle every time to fire around. And you know that is a very very big weakness, a very strong weakness that you know cannot be overlooked. So let's say you go ahead and decide to not use one of these style gas blocks as such. You want to go ahead and use a low profile style stating that you're going to go ahead and put this gas block on this low profile, it sets screws in the bottom right here, it screws puts tension on the barrel, <clears throat> excuse me, on the barrel makes it nice and tight. Now what happens um, this uh, bolt carrier rides in here now what happens is this gas key here this opening here, that gas tube when this goes forward, you see right there the gas tube, that gas tube rides into this carrier. Now, 
the next malfunction I'm going to describe to you might seem kind of rare or kind of uh, uh, impossible, but I've seen it happen twice, and I'll explain it. These this carrier is held on by these two screws right here. Now I've had this happened twice where these screws have actually backed out on me. Well, you're going to say, well, maybe uh, these screws uh, weren't staked down like they should be. Well, both of these uh, my carriers were actually factory carriers. One was a Colt factory carrier and one was a Bushmaster factory carrier where these screws actually backed up. Now, if you guys really know a lot about this stuff, you'll know that uh, what happens is the staking doesn't prevent the screws from loosening up. All it does is prevents the screws from actually falling out of the um, of of their of their their slots. So the screws can become loose even with a uh, factory or, or 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 any type of staking. Um, so what happened was with this carrier key becoming loose. One time, uh, as the action cycled, the carrier key was kind of askew, like say like such, and it struck this gas tube on an angle and that angle, the effect of the truck on the angle was enough to go ahead and push this to about a 5 or a 10 degree angle like such where my rifle for the rest of the course was now a bolt action rifle only functioned after every time I pulled the charging handle I had to go ahead and, and cycle everything manually now luckily for me I had another rifle with me at the time but you know that is not a uh, an easy um, malfunction to go ahead and repair that requires you taking off any handguard you have on there, Re um, unscrewing this, uh, this, um, these set screws here on this gas block, realigning the gas block with the uh, the gas port, and making sure there was no damage done to your uh, to your gas tube or any other piece of the rifle. So, um, even those of you who go ahead and think you're going to go ahead and get a low profile gas block and uh, and let's say put a full length you know full length handguard on there. Um, thinking that the handguard will go ahead and protect the gas block, um, it still can go ahead and where this uh, loosens up and um, you strike your uh, your gas tube on the wrong angle and you go ahead and and um, and misalign everything. So with this, however, there's a a simple um, I'm going to say almost fix. What you do is when you go ahead and install this, you're going to go ahead and before you set screw this down. Before you go ahead and put this screw on, I'll show you in a second, into the uh, into the barrel and put the tension on there. What you do is you take a drill um, and you dimple the barrel right here. You put, you know, you see how deep this is actually cutting here. This is set for the pins, where the pins are two pins that go through that go through this barrel like such, so they can't actually twist on it. Um, what you're going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and Dimple the barrel and use a little bit of a Loctite on there. Um, if you're going to keep it for a while, I would go ahead and use the red Loctite, set it down there nice and tight. But if you dimple this barrel and you put this set screw maybe that far into the barrel, that will go ahead and add a lot of strength. It'll be a lot tougher for that, um, for this, for this uh, low profile gas block to go ahead and back out. With this um, type of gas block, you don't really have that option. The only other option you can really do, and I've seen Adco, um, one, you know, one of the famous uh, companies that go ahead and deal with uh, drilling and um, and uh, and welding and all that stuff for a lot of guys who don't have that skill, they'll go ahead and, and put this on a uh, um, a mill of some sort, and they will go ahead and drill uh, a pinhole right through here on either this type or this type of gas block, so you can go ahead and actually have these gas blocks pinned. Uh, maybe in um, in the future, if I have enough time, I'll go ahead and do a video of that. But that is the best option with any gas block. Uh, if you're going to have a gas block, no matter what type of gas block you have on there, the best option is that, that gas block should be pinned, and you will go ahead and avoid a lot of malfunctions. You'll go ahead and add a lot of uh, durability to this rifle that um, you otherwise might be overlooking. Thanks for watching.